Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name is Ian and this is my kitchen table where I do all my modelling. It's been a little while since my last video, I've been really busy with life, work and everything in general, uh, but I've managed to get some time set aside now to get on and push on with the build I announced on the last video, which was the Revell 132nd HE 111 with a few added extras. What I've done since the last video is I have finished construction of the Eddard photo etch Bombay and we've also got the photo etch uh, wheel wells done and we're already completed on enhancing the fuselage and cockpit uh, so I'm ready now to lay down some primer and then we're going to get some top coat on and start doing some weathering before we move on to putting down all the color photo etch instrument panels and bits and pieces and closing up the fuselage trying to get this thing pushed along so what i'll do now is i'll turn the camera around uh, we'll get it down on the bench in the spray booth and we can have a closer look at the photo etch parts that we've built up and we can start putting some paint down to move the build along so uh, there we go as i said we'll have a closer look uh, that is the photo etch bombay now how accurate that is i don't know uh, it's slightly different sized from the kit parts, but detail wise, it's far ahead. Um, you've got all your river detail, you've got all the little releasing latches for the bombs, and if you turn it over, then you can see all the cracking detail underneath, which when, when you get that painted and put a wash on it, it's just gonna pop. It's absolutely loaded with detail. How correct it is, I don't know. Um, the wheel wells, again, look fantastic. Full of detail, really livened up, very easy to do, and it all fitted perfectly. I have to say the Bombay wasn't so easy to do. Um, these central spars here were quite difficult to fit, and these bits as well needed a bit of fettling to get it in, but once it was all fettling got in, it, it was okay. Now I did try and solder a bit on this, but it didn't take it very well. I ended up just gluing it with super glue, ordinary super glue, and it, it's fine. It's strong enough, it's robust enough, and once it's inside the, the actual fuselage, then it'll be fine. If we look at the fuselage, then on, on this side here, then you can see we've got all the, the resin MG magazines. And a little bit of photo etch there around, I think it's a fire extinguisher or something, I'm not sure. Uh, the radio set here has got some colour photo etch to go on it. Uh, we can look at the other side, which has got the bulkheads and the flooring. There's more MG magazines and you've got a full resin radio set, which is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if this will lock on. The focus. Maybe not just quite so well. We'll try and get that to focus there. There we go. The detail on that is superb and it's a beautiful addition. Um, you've got a little bit of photo etch around the doorways and then in the rear of the cockpit. And if we actually look at the cockpit itself, now there's a bit of Eddard Brazen resin in here as well as the photo etch, but the detail is stunning, it really is. Let's see if we can get that just to focus a wee bit better. There we go. So it really does make a huge difference to get a focus on that. I have to excuse my hands are terribly dry. Keep all the hand washing my hands to do. There we go. So um, really, really nice. And then once that's painted and a bit of a wash putting over it, a little bit of modulation, all that detail is going to pop. Um, and then when we get the colour photo etch onto it, it's going to be even better. So that's that's the the subsections all ready to paint. Um, I'm going to mix up some Mr. Color, Mr. Surfacer 1500. I'm going to put a little bit of gloss black in it just to help me with the shadow coats and that. But I'm going to use the Mr. Surfacer because hopefully it'll stick better to all the photo etch parts that we've got. Um, and then once that's done, we'll look on what paints we're going to use for the interior. 
So we'll get the, the spray booth and the airbrush and that set up and some paint mix then we'll get back to it. So we're at the spray booth. Um, simple cheap and cheerful spray booth I uh, picked up. Um, we've got a 3M vapor rated mask which will protect our lungs. Now what I've done for primer is I was going to tint this with uh, a little bit of black but after experimenting with it, it doesn't like um, acrylic black and that's all I've got. So it's just going to be thinned, probably 60-40 is what it is. I've just thinned it in the bottle um, and I'm just going to spray it that colour, which is fine. We can work with that. Uh, so it's Mr. Surface of 1000 heavily thinned with Mr. Surface of Thinner. And I'm going to put it through my uh, Procon Boy PS290 uh, 0.5mm trigger spray airbrush with a fan cap on. Um, it's probably spraying about 25 psi. Um, might need a little bit more, depends. It's quite an air in, uh, an air hungry brush, um, more than your smaller sort of 0.2 mil brushes, um, just for the volume it's chucking through. So the compressor will be running in the background. Um, right, so what we'll do is we'll get the extractor on and get the brush loaded up and, and go for some paint. You've got to be careful with these pots because uh, there is they tend to build up a, a bit of rubbish around the rim. I've wiped most of it away. Um, when I first opened it, there was quite a few hard bits on the rim. So you've got to be careful you don't when you open the pot, open it and pour it straight into the airbrush because you will end up filling your colour cup full of hard rubbish. This airbrush has got quite a large colour cup, which is fantastic because we'll be able to hold all the paint we need. That's probably the consistency of milk. Um, there's a little bit of room in the colour cup just in case I think I need to thin it a bit more. We can do that. Hopefully, we don't need to because it's really thin, heavily thin. And with this amount of paint, I'm going to put the cap on the colour cup so I don't want to spill any anywhere. So, let's have a go and see what we get now. There we go, that's spraying not too bad. So we've got the fan is vertical. What we also need to do, because these are only temporary fitted in, is we can pop these out, just fitting them in with a bit of white tack. Very old white tack, but it does the job. spray these individually. Now there's more detail to go in the wheel wells uh, when we put the undercarriage in but for now we've got enough in that we can get this primed up. So give it a quick just air just to make sure there's no dust on it and let's see how we get on when we spray. Nice dusty coat to start on everything. And you get all the angles. Now I have to say, these trigger airbrushes, the control is brilliant on them. I really do like this airbrush. And I 
if I was ever to buy another airbrush, I would certainly consider getting one of the more detail orientated um, Pro Convoy airbrushes. So that's laid down a beautiful thin coat of paint. It's going to highlight any repair jobs we need to do. There's a little bit of repair job here where the plastic split, but we'll do that when we get it all together. The main thing is it's going to be keying up, keying up the by the wet so we can actually get some color onto it. Make sure you get down the middle. You're not going to see it when it's in, but it needs to be covered. Okay, we'll go and dust over the wheel wells. This is where you really do need an extractor. You can draw on it. Now it might not look like we're getting much primer down, but this plastic's very thin, so it's not very light fast quite deceptive. Uh, we don't need to turn everything grey. All we need to do is get really the photo X parts primed up. So the next colour coats we start laying down will stick and adhere to the metal. Um, what we'll probably end up doing with the next coat will be maybe a NATO black or even just a gloss black. Just to give it a bit of light fast before we start putting on the actual RLM colours. Another good thing about priming is you can see where things have come apart. There's a little bit of separation there along that edge so we'll get that glued in before we do the next coat of paint as well. Right, let's see what we can do here. Put the quick dust off, in line of the box for a little while. We'll probably hold it there and there. And again, this will bond into the resin parts, so that will unify that, that coat. I think we can probably turn that down a bit, there's an awful lot of air coming out of there. So let's turn that down to, uh, running about 20 psi now the compressor chance and I'll put probably a slightly thicker layer of paint down. There we go. And all the angles Remembering to do under here because you'll be able to see underneath. Another piece of the photo wax there. Right, and the fuselage halves. Now 
It doesn't look like there's much there, but there is a coat over there. That's keyed up the surface. And that's all we need. And we'll put a little bit in the back here, whether we all else going to be. So the next colour of paint that comes in here will make a big odds to the final finished colour. All we need to do is lay down a colour that's going to give the subsequent colours something to grip onto and prime up all this photo etching and resin that we put in there. Fan airbrushes, you get a lot of overspray. But it does lay down a lovely coat of paint. That's looking pretty good. All right, we'll give the wheels well, a quick coat, I don't know much we've got left the colour cup. Only a little bit left, so we'll just give that a quick dusting over the wheel wells and the Bombay. And then... Are we doing okay? out of paint. So let's get a bit of thinners in the airbrush before this stuff sets up and we'll have a look at the parts in a bit more detail once the paint's cured. thing about this to blow through just use some Mr. Hobby colour thinners. Get the brush in there, nice soft brush, get it in there. And then just blow through. Make sure you clean off the front end if there's any there. There we go, a little white around the rim on the inside. Just to go for another colour. A little wipe on the cap as well. A little bit on there. And if you wipe the cap with the paper that you got your overspray on from when you're cleaning, there's enough active thinners to clean away any paint that you've got there. Keep it nice and clean, and that will keep working well for you. Right. Let's just see what we've got then. So, let's have a closer look now, we've got a bit of primer on, try and get it to focus, there we go, look at that detail, absolutely stunning, detail there, I'll get my hand in there, we go, get a hold of it, you see it shining in the light, and that is the beauty with Mr. Surfacer, you get a fantastic smooth paint finish, and it's pretty much unified all the colour so you can see what you're working with and you can just see that detail now you don't have that detail with the kit parts there's, there's nothing anywhere near like that so that is the advantage of doing doing this they're very tricky it's very complicated it takes ages you need some half decent photo etch bending equipment you can't just do this with a set of ordinary pliers. Um, I've got the small shop hold and fold. If 
photo etch benders. I've got two of them, a large one and a medium one. I've also got the Tamiya small nose photo etch pliers. And with all that, I've managed to do that. Um, let's have a look at the primer on the fuselage halves. So that's just making that, unifying that halves. It's not a thick coat, it's just a very thin coat. But what it is, it's a coat of paint that is going to give our next layer something to key into. And then we can look at the cockpit. Sorry, reach for it. And there we go. That's just helped unify everything in there. A little bit of flash I've missed there. So that's the beauty of doing primer coats is you will see the errors and the mistakes. And because it's a primer coat, it gives you a chance to fix it. Now, there's something we didn't see before. Is lots and lots of pinholes in that resin part. And that's the primer showing that up. How I'm going to deal with that, I don't know. I'll probably be able to hide it with something. Maybe even just a brush coat of Mr. Surfacer or the like. But... Yeah, they're there for all to see, so we'll have to do something with that. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to let this paint flash off a little bit. And we're going to look at getting a darker shade of grey. Probably, maybe, German grey. Um, or NATO black. To lay down another layer of primer coat which we can then build on when we do the interior colour. Now I think the interior colour for this will be RLMO2, um, which will really look nice um, painted on top of a real dark grey or black primer. So I'll get that all organised and then we'll get back into the spray booth once I've got that primer coat down and it's dried, because it's going to be this, laying it down exactly the same as I've done with this coat, and then we'll We'll look at us putting down, or we'll start to put down the interior colour and how I'm going to approach that. Um, I suppose I need to also mention that yes, there are some ejector pin marks there I haven't filled, but it, realistically, guys, you're not going to see them. Uh, once all this thing's all buttoned up, you're not going to see them. Uh, my brother in law wasn't too fussed about them, so we all decided we'd just let them go and get the thing put together for him. So I'll get the primer coat done. The second primer, the dark primer, and then we'll come back to me laying down the top coat.